Hi you guys, welcome back to another first impression video. Today we have Vogue's new fall collection. They just released this in the last couple of days. Um, Simplicity fall first impression video went up last week, a week and a half ago. And today we're going to be looking at the new Vogue patterns fall edit. If this is your first time watching one of these videos, welcome. This is our little like hangout area where we come to chat about all the new patterns. So I'm going to take a look at every single one of them. We're going to review them for fit, like anything that kind of jumps out at me that might be a fit issue. We'll look at different fabric options, both the ones that they suggest as well as the ones that I think would be cute. <laughs> and just kind of like the overall design. We're just going to kind of take it all in together. So we this is a reprint, right? They've been They've had this one for a while. This is a um, DVF wrap dress. I think it's only available online. I'm 99% sure of that. Um, so we're going to skip on over to this first pattern here. It's a Mrs. Cape and belt. So starting off strong with a jacket. Size wise, we have extra small to 2XL all in one envelope. It says, unlined capes have pointed collar, front slit openings, collar stand, epaulettes, which are those things on your shoulders, button front closure, and top stitching. View A has button flaps. View B cinches at the waist with a matching belt pulled through bound buttonhole opening. Which, you know, I'd expect nothing less from Vogue. This is their bound buttonhole opening that they're talking about. Oh, no, 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 JK. This is the bound buttonhole opening. But this is also done in a sort of similar way. This is an inseam bound opening kind of thing. This is the bound buttonhole. Super chic. These are the epaulettes. These are the pointed collars. Okay. If you've ever watched one of my fall videos before, and I've talked about capes, the thing that I struggle with when it comes to capes is how do you drive, right? Like I'm not in a big city where I'm just walking everywhere. I'm literally like in my car driving places. So this one does seem like you have a little bit more range of motion than some of the other ones I've seen. There's quite a big opening here, so it might pass the driving test. <laughs> um, I love what they did with this fabric. Obviously, everything's all matched up. It looks, I mean, the the seamstresses at Vogue are just top notch. Um, interesting. I wonder, I never thought of this. I wonder if this is the same seamstresses for every brand now that they're all under the same company. Hmm. That's a good question for Simplicity if they ever do like a ask me anything or something. So the epaulettes do fall off the shoulder. Like they go over the shoulder seam. Still a really pretty seam here. Normally I'm pretty nitpicky about where the shoulder seams fall. But yeah, this one feels, it doesn't look off to me. Let's see where hers lands. She is like meaning business. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, hard to tell on this yellow fabric. But other than that, it's pretty easy to fit a, oops, a cape, right? Not super difficult. These are those same shoulder seams that come down here. It's it's like they're a shoulder seam, but it's also kind of like they're a princess seam. So I might be a little bit forgiving. But if you know that you are notorious for having short shoulder length, this is on the very tip, tip, tip of what would be good in my opinion beautiful. All right, here's the back of the envelope. Yeah, and I looked to look at the line drawings too to see what the intention was. Again, it's very, very close to what they have here. Um, it does look like the shoulder would extend past them a little bit. I don't know, maybe double check and do it if you feel like it. <laughs> okay, these are unlined capes, okay? They have, so you could use like um, Hong Kong finishes would be really beautiful. Um, they have a pointed, we already read all this, pointed collar, all that kind of stuff. Well, I'm looking for fabrics. Okay, boiled wool, obviously. I think that's what maybe both of those were that they made samples from. Denim, fleece, medium weight wool, for sure. And then because it does have the epaulettes and the pocketing and stuff, it's giving a little bit of like trench coat vibes. So maybe consider making it in a twill or something. That could also be really cool. All right, all the sizes are in one. Are we gonna get finished garment measurements? No, Vogue just never caught on to that, I guess. Um, 
I mean, we do get them, but it's just the width of the lower edge, which is really unhelpful, guys. And if I remember correctly, Vogue also took away the body measurements from the back of the envelope. So we don't even get that. <laughs> it's just like, how are we supposed to pick a size? I don't understand. Especially now that they're doing the format. Maybe since they're all, all the sizes are in one, they're like, you're going to buy the whole thing anyways, figure it out later. I don't know. Some people have directed me to this, but it still doesn't help with finished garment measurements. So, and plus like, why make it hard work for everybody? You know? Um, okay. So next is the Mrs. Dress and Belt. Sizing is six to 14 and 16 to 24. Unlined dress, loose fitting through bust has shoulder pads, asymmetric front drape, cut on the bias, gorgeous, gathered to shoulder and side seam, okay, like across the body, great, princess seamed bodice, bias cut skirt, love it, matching belt with self-covered buckle and thread loops, view A has long tapered sleeves with elbow darts and invisible zipper opening, view B has bishop sleeves with button cuffs and lap opening. Is this a knit dress or, no, it has to be woven for all the bias. Well, look at these ladies. So, bias cut bodice, bias cut skirt, princess seams within this, and then also this like draping detail. In addition, you I think also have shoulder pads in here, and then this really pretty sleeve. This is the bishop sleeve into a cuff or just your plain cuff there. Both of them are midi length. The only difference is the sleeve. Yep, got it. Here's the back. Yeah, fit looks really good. I mean, she's got some things going on here, but you guys, this is, she's a fit model, okay? Like these weren't made for her. So I do give them a little bit of leniency. She's also kind of leaning into this hip. It did say, didn't it describe it as a very loose, no, just, oh, close fitting. I can't read. I'm sorry. I interpreted that as close fitting and I was like, Shoot, I can't even talk now. I interpreted that as loose fitting and I was like, this is definitely not loose fitting. But we have cleared that up. So you've got the princess seams continuing to the back. Yeah, really, really pretty. And because there's a shoulder pad in here, this should be at the very edge of that. So really nice little baby. No, not a baby hem. There's a nice big, deep one inch hem there. Okay. Yeah, I wish it gate. I wish this part was a little bit drapier. You know what I mean? Like, I like that this is like a fit and flare dress, right? Very simple. And then I wish this were a little bit more scarf like, I guess. Maybe it would also be pretty to do all of this in like a solid color and then do a contrast as if it were a scarf. That would be fun. So we are looking at crepe back satin, matte jersey, which wouldn't have a lot of stretch to it. Rayon Shally Silk Jacquard. Yeah, kind of like silkier, silky, but maybe with some structure to it still. And then here's the really unhelpful. Oh, no. Oh, no. I sound like Mrs. Doubtfire. Okay, so they gave us finished, but we don't have body. And so in order to make heads or tails of this, we'd have to flip back and forth between the other page and this one. That's annoying. That's annoying. Do we really need to repeat all of this stuff? I don't know. Okay, either way, finished, bust. Bust and waist are really the things that are going to matter here. Go up to 48 and a half and 40 and a half respectively. But again, I don't know how much ease that is. I'm just talking about like sizing. But I just think that's kind of unhelpful to have to like flip back and forth. Anyways, Mrs. Dress with sleeve and length variations. Love the bows. Sizing is 8 to 16 and 18 to 26. Fit and flare line dresses, close fitting through bust, have bias bands, bow detail, princess seam bodice, gourd skirt, invisible back zipper with hook and eye closure, and side seam pockets. View A has long tapered sleeves with elbow darts and invisible zipper opening. View B has short sleeves, separate pattern pieces for your bust cups. So princess seamed. There's also got to be a seam down the center front in order to get this keyhole. The bows are adorable. I am shocked we didn't do a contrast black and white situation. Black and white is having a moment. Um, kind of surprised we went with two solids here, but... Um, 
but yeah, pretty standard fit and flare princess seamed dress. Um, here's one that's a little bit more like a gown with the maybe taffeta that they used. I kind of really adore the short sleeve gown. That doesn't get enough credit. Um, this would be a beautiful, like, part of your wedding dress. You know, imagine it in white or cream. Wouldn't that be so pretty? Love the bows. Again, I already said that, but I still love them. <laughs> and that purple on her is really pretty, too. Show us the back. Okay. Here's the back. So again, princess seams. This is the invisible black zipper with the hook and eye closure they were talking about. Of course, everything matches up perfectly. There's actually like a little waistband here, which I missed. Or is that a belt? I don't know how that works. Did it say belt? It probably did. Look how pretty this gourd skirt is when you add like some structure to your skirt. This one is not gourd. Or is it just the structure that's doing that? If so, that's incredible. Even more so than I thought. Um, yeah, no, they're the same skirt. Yeah, gourd skirt. View A. Yeah, okay, now does it say that there's a belt? Bias, bands, bow detail. It That might be sewn on like a waistband and then here's your finished garment measurements again bust is most important than waist same ish measurements as the last dress notions wise you don't need a lot and interfacing it looks like we might just be interfacing the bodice it is fully lined so you would need interfacing main fabric lining fabric and then some zippers it's, i mean it wouldn't be that expensive of a dress just gonna say that top of my list so far all right next we have mrs dress with collar and sleeve variations Sizing, 8 to 16, 18 to 26, close fitting, lined sheath dress, have waist and neckline dart shaping, flap detail, invisible back zipper, back vent. View A has cut in shoulders, which is stunning. View B has extended shoulders, epaulets, pointed collar, and two piece sleeves. So that means you're getting, you're either getting separate bodices or at the very least, separate cut lines on the shoulder part. If one is extended and the other one is cut back, they should not be the same pattern piece. But this one has the epaulets that end at the shoulder seam. This is the darting detail they're talking about. It's also right here. Can you see that now? But interesting to put just a rando pocket here. Maybe this one, it makes more sense. This one with this fabric, it feels like, that feels weird. Like you almost need the epaulets for it to kind of make sense. But I guess it could just be interesting. Like, oh, that's interesting. No good rhyme or reason. It's just like, Meh, okay, sure. Are we going to get the back? This is a little bit small on her through the hips, but that's probably just her body type oh yeah and then here there's more fisheye darts in the back and that is a long vent if she bends over in the right way you're gonna be able to see things so <laughs> be careful about that but the fit through here is absolutely stunning pretty much perfect couldn't ask for more these fabrics though are not doing well with the there's a lot of puckering here, and I'm not entirely sure what is going on here. That to me looks like a two, the arm size is too deep. I don't know. It's, I think they try to nip and tuck or something, and it's just, it's not it. For as good as the sewing was on that other dress, this one's a little sus. Oops. I do that in every video. Welcome to an Inside the Hem video. Okay. Yeah, that looks a little sloppy. I'm not, like, even this right here. Like, I don't really know what's happening here. Especially for Vogue. 
This one looks good in the back, though. So, I don't know. And the front of it looks okay. Is the arm size super deep here? No, I don't know what they did. I don't know why the back looks so strange. But, okay, fabric-wise, they are suggesting gabardine, which is kind of like suiting. You see it a lot in the suiting sections. Medium weight wools, twill, which is probably what I would use, and wool crepe. But it's just a sheath dress, so you could also do it in denim or corduroy or any of those like mid-weight stable fabrics. All right. Next, we have this cutie, Mrs. Dress with sleeve and length variations. 6 to 12 and 14 to 22 so on the very smallest of their size range nothing there's no two so four is the smallest and it only goes up to a 22 fit and player dresses are lined and underlined close fitting through bust and waist set in sleeves princess seam bodice with yoke detail gourd skirt side seam pockets invisible back zipper self fringe detail view a has cap sleeves view b has long sleeves with bands Kind of seems like they took the same silhouette here and just like redid it over and over again. Um, also, why are we lining and interlining? Not interlining, underlining. What is the word? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I confused myself. We have lined and underlined. Now that I'm saying that out loud, is underlined the word? That underlined is like when you underline a word. Interlined? I've done confused myself. I don't know why we're doing that. Normally that's like with a, um, like an eyelid or a sheer or something where you would need that extra layer between the main fabric and the lining. So you don't see this side, uh, so you don't see the, um, seam allowances, but I don't, maybe something to do with this fringe is why we're having to do that. Either way, we have this yoke with a center front seam, a normal little sleeve, this is um, princess seamed bodice and then your skirt. Right? Doesn't this seem like, you know, they just chopped up. They just hacked one of the other versions we've already seen today. Here's the back. The fringe detail is cute. I'm just looking like these would be different fabrics, but they're not. They're just cut on the bias. So that's what makes it look so interesting. Huh? I mean, it is a cute take on like, you know, like Fit and Flare the Gourd Skirt has a very kind of 50s take on it. When you think of 50s, you think of like maybe poodle skirts and that plaid kind of is a little bit of a like a tweed schoolgirl-ish vibe to it. The line drawing's pretty. I think I could be talked into this one. Hmm. Um, Boucle is what's going to give you that look. So is tweed. But then linen? Can you do fringe with linen? And then here's underlining. Yeah, I guess it is called underlining. With cotton batiste, muslin, or organza. And then your lining is going to be silky stuff. Charmeuse, china silk, taffeta. Um, notions are just the zipper. Dress, underlining, and lining. And so there's no, yeah, how are you making the fringe with linen or wool crepe for that matter? Hmm. And again, why are we underlining? That's so confusing to me. I guess I'd have to look at the instructions to see if there's a rhyme or reason to that or if they just want a really freaking heavy structured dress. All right. Ooh la la. Bows. I got a sneak peek at the next one. Oh my gosh. Okay. Bows are having a moment. I mentioned that in the little baby bow one. These are another bow one. Um, this is a Badgley Mishka evening dress sizing 8 to 16, 18 to 26. So that's the largest end of their Mrs. range. Close fitting lined strapless dress has draped bodice with bow detail, fully interlaced, built in found interfaced built-in foundation hanging straps like those little like almost like ribbons that you use to hang your dress invisible back zipper and back vent 
Okay, fully interface built-in foundation. It didn't say anything about boning. Didn't say anything about a waist stay. So I don't know what they mean by fully interfaced. But yeah, this is really, really something special. It's kind of giving like 80s a little bit. Yeah, okay, strapless dress. It, they do have some darting in the back, which is nice. Not many photos. Yeah, it's really interesting. I, it's not my... Where am I going to wear this? Definitely can't wear that to Target. Um, brocade, Mikado, and Shantung would be your fabrics. Lining, again, in those lining fabrics. Note, the lining may show. So you'd want them to match. Now we're underlining with a sew-in interfacing. If you come down here, it is boned, invisible zipper, silicone gripper tape. That's along the bust so that it doesn't fall down. And then the ribbon for the hanging loop. So I don't see a waist stay. That would usually be like a one inch ribbon or something. You could definitely look it up and see how to add one yourself. It's not super hard, but it does give you that sort of like, I don't know, it's sort of like, a, I don't want to say foundation, but it, it holds it to your waist so there's not so much weight pulling on the top of it. It's a nice detail. I'd be surprised if in the actual Badgley Mishka version there wasn't a waist stay, but maybe not. Maybe not. But it does have boning and a ton of interfacing, so that should help keep it up and also hold its structure a little bit. Okay, the next one that I got to peek at <laughs> is going to be divisive. I know it. I know people are going to be like, what is that? Oh my God, no. But it is Vogue. And we are always telling these people when we look at these collections, this is so boring. We see this all the time. Give us something different. Well, be careful what you wish for because <laughs> then you'll get this. <laughs> Okay, so the sizing is 6 to 14 and 16 to 24. Special occasion dresses are lined and underlined. Close fitting bodice has slightly raised waist. Okay, deep V neck front, invisible back zipper, and overlay pieces that are tied at the shoulders and baby hemmed. Wrong side will show. Thread loops hold in place. Okay. Full skirt, gathered at waist, has side seam pockets, waist, I'm sorry, and length variations. Petticoat, which is the underneath part, has grain ribbon waistband. That's the waist stay that I was talking about before. Um, hook and eye closures and back waist opening is narrow hemmed. Back waist opening is narrow hemmed. Probably because the weight of the skirt with all this gathers would be heavy, so they put a waist stay in this one. If you've ever gotten married, you probably had one in your wedding dress. I mean, they're not uncommon in special occasion dresses, but dang, these bows are something. Somebody, somebody, please wear this to a frock tails this fall. The shoe is adorable. Wow. But yeah, it's just one layer tied into this huge bow. Let me see the back. This part is what's baby hemmed. Oh, that is baby hemmed. But it's lined and underlined. Why are we baby hemming anything? It's looking like this might be somewhat difficult to execute at home. I can't zoom in anymore. But the way that it made the description made it sound like they were just kind of like tacked on a little bit. And then what is this extra little green thing here? I don't know. I don't know what that is. So that's confusing me. And then, yeah, why are, why are we not lining the back? I don't get that either. It is pretty though, but yeah, she funky. She real funky. At least this one's like a sheer. So see how this is when underlining is really helpful. You have this sheer thing going on here, but the dress has a layer of underlining under it. And then it's fully lined on the inside too. So it's also not scratchy. So you can't see through it and it's not scratchy. This is a good application of a underlined and lined dress. And then you have your petticoat. Oh, let's look at the line drawings next. That might be helpful. Okay, so they're recommending brocade, 
dotted Swiss. Well, okay, that could be sweet. It would definitely be lighter weight and it's see-through, it's sheer, so you'd need to underline it. Lace, same thing, Mikado and Taffeta. Underlining with Organza. I mean, I mean, Organza period, that's pretty harsh. There could be a few other things you could underline it with. Probably matching, like if you did a dotted Swiss, I would make it out of cotton. You know, I try and match the outer fabric a little bit. And then your lining fabric. And then netting for your petticoat. Okay, let's go see. Oh boy, let's go see the line drawings if that's any more helpful. Okay, no, it's not because I can't really zoom in. Let me read it again. Overlay pieces. Overlay pieces that are overlay. Okay, 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 I'm getting it now. That extra little green part is the bodice. This whole thing is an extra piece that gets sewn into the cup of the dress. Overly pieces that are tied at the shoulders and baby hemmed. Thread loops hold in place. That part I don't get. Thread loops hold in place. But you do just, yeah, okay. Can y'all see how that's like the bodice here and then this whole thing gets tied over? So you don't have to do huge bows. You could just do like the first part of tying your shoes and have them drape down or... I don't know. You could maybe find something else cool to do with them besides these huge bows on your shoulders. If you're not into the bows. If you're into the bows, by all means, bow it up. Okay, now we're into tops. Oh, bodysuits. I had just said on the simplicity one. I'm glad we're moving away from bodysuits. I think I realized they're not they're not all they're cracked up to be. Um, 8 to 16, 18 to 26 in the size range. Close fitting bodysuit is asymmetric neckline, which I do love. That is really pretty. Stabilized with quarter inch elastic. Great, great little construction detail. Bus starts. Interesting choice for a knit, but helpful to some. Long sleeves and fastens with snap closures. View A has front and back gathered drape pulled through loop. Through this little loop here. Yeah, the bust starts are interesting. They're also not even close to the right place. Her bust apex is here, so they need to be lower and probably out a little bit. I don't know why we're doing bust starts in a knit garment anyways. But raglan sleeve. Yeah, both of the models seem unimpressed. Also, it's got to be... Oh... I was just going to say it's got to be their low rise pants. And then they give me this. Are those the ones from, didn't we already, they released those already, right? Those are, haven't I seen those last fall maybe? The neckline is super pretty. I will give them that. But what's the shape of the bum? This is the part that I always can't stand. Yeah. Like, whose butt is shaped that way is it supposed to be a thong because that ain't happening like i need it to be like almost like a boy short but then it's even harder to get off so i'm just like kind of over them just give me a long shirt again let's go back to the 2000s and just give me a really long shirt four-way stretch knits 75 percent cross train stretch thank you so much for including this vogue can you tell your little brothers and sisters to do the same cotton span rayon span stretch velvet yep Okay, next up we have, oh, the skirt that they paired with that little asymmetrical top, asymmetric top. It's a skirt and belt, eight to 16, 18 to 26, trench inspired wrap midi skirts, have button front closure, belt loops, matching belts, welt pockets, and top stitch hem. View A has handkerchief hem, view B has asymmetric drape detail. Okay, cute little take on a fall skirt, especially this little plaid one. We've seen those a thousand times, but they made it like double breasted. I don't know how else to say that when it's just on the skirt, but with the welt pocket and the little handkerchief hem. And then this one's asymmetric, which matches the, her asymmetric top. These are thoughtful and cool. Again, not totally my style. I would wear them to Target, but... Yeah, I think in the fall, I'm just not wearing skirts. Am I going to say that out loud? I, 
do I wear, I wear skirts in the fall. I don't know. Maybe this is just like a little too, no pun intended, buttoned up for me, you know? Like not, I don't know. Maybe I do like it. I do like it. I just don't know if I would wear it. Like would I reach for it a whole bunch? Maybe. I don't know. Again, I could probably be talked into any of these. Um, interestingly, this is the center back seam. We're having some issues here. I get that her knee is popped, but what's the front of this one like again? Yeah, there might be some pulling because she, this, on the other picture, it's pulling around to this side. Maybe it's just the fabric's getting caught on her boot or something and I'm just overanalyzing, but something is definitely pulling this over. Here's the back of that one. They are fun and funky and cute. How did they handle the visible hem? I think they just surged it and then blind hemmed it. Not the best, not the worst. Nobody's going to notice that but you and me. Anyways. Okay. Oh, this one looks so much prettier. Not in that leather. I think the leather was probably not the best choice or maybe because she's always standing with a popped hip and never standing just straight on something drapier might have been a little bit better for this one because look at the line drawings like a million times better right isn't that cool so much cooler so 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 much cooler or even if you did this out of the leather but then you did this out of something drapey i can see that in black being pulled off really well you know, like separate fabrics. All right, medium weight denim, synthetic leather, twill, wool suiting. Yeah, you could absolutely get a black leather and a black twill. That would be really easy. And then it's lined, at least partially. Nope, lining. Yeah, partially lined, maybe just the waistband. And then buttons. And I guess you're going to top stitch some stuff. So you need your top stitch thread. Okay. That's that one. Disappointing this. This could have been, this could have shown better. People will start making this one, I think. And then we'll get to see some really cool versions of it on Instagram with the hashtag. Okay, barrel pants. I'm surprised it took them so long to get a set of these. But eight, uh, 6 to 14, 16 to 24 on these high-rise barrel leg pants have belt loops, back darts, Front fly zipper, hook and bar closure at waist and stitched hem. View A has jean style front pocket and back patch pockets. View B has side front seaming front and back patch pockets. Okay, so the barrel shape, just like this, where it's short, I know, is having a moment. Very trendy. This one where it breaks at her leg, not exactly the trend, but maybe a way for you to pull it off in regular life. I get that it takes a very specific kind of person to be able to pull this one off. How about those Prada loafers? Um, but it is cool and hip and like you would look like the coolest person in the world if you were walking around in these. But jeans, normal jeans, and then these have these cool little whatever detail that is. Yeah, I don't she's this top half of her isn't really matching the vibe like she's going to the office and this chick is like definitely not working in an office she's too cool for an office you know she works at we work she works at a co-working place <laughs> This is cool, like casual version of it. I do like that. You could also do the other version with just a little knit top. That's really easy to pull these things off because the pants are going to be, yeah, the pants are going to be like the standout. They do fit her really well. Does it make her look bow-legged? Does it trick the eye? I don't know. The top stitching right here, that's so interesting. And the fact they use contrast white thread too, that's like, a choice yeah and then here's hers they are super cool I don't know guys maybe maybe I have so much denim yeah look how cool these pockets are huh all right crepe gabardine medium weight denim wool suiting lining fabric I think just for the pocket bags interfacing 
and then the hip goes up to 56. It's a roomy hip. Maybe that's why I like it so much. Because I'm a pair and I'm like, oh, good. Pants I can, that were like made for my butt to fit in. I don't know. I'm going to have to see other people make it. And then, you know, then I'll be like a little sheep and follow people. But they are really cool. And I'm happy for Vogue for putting those in. Unconventional. Okay. Julio Cesar. This is his fall 24 pattern. This jacket. 8 to 16. 18 to 26. Very loose fitting line jacket. It's notch collar, dropped shoulders, welt pockets, and sleeve bands. I do love the fabric combination. That is what makes this so killer. If you can find fabrics that are perfectly coordinated like this in a jacketing, by all means, I think most people are probably going to struggle with that a little bit. But really beautiful. She has the meanest face in every picture. She can't hate everything. Well, I mean, she can, but... Yeah, the shape of this is really cool. It's giving like um, like a little bit, maybe because of the wide bands, it's giving kimono a little bit, but with like an actual notched collar. I love how it's so oversized. This would make a really great pattern for a quilt coat. Just want to put that out there or like a Madelaze coat. Um, that would be really cool. Yeah, it can't be difficult to sew. Brocade, damask, denim, and wool blends are what they are recommending. Hers was probably brocade, but could have been. Yeah, that's brocade. Damask would be also be really pretty, or jacquard would be really pretty. I don't know. This is one of those ones that I don't think you're going to find your fabric at Joanne, unfortunately. You know, you're going to have to find, you have to go shopping somewhere really cool like New York. Um, but who knows? Maybe Joanne would have one of those, like, really surprising fabrics that would work. Um, was that it? Yeah, because there's no notions. I love that. So you have the jacket and some lining. It is fully lined and then also fully interfaced. So this is where you're going to spend all your extra money. It will end up being an expensive jacket. There's no doubt about that. But maybe if you start with, like, a quilt. Well, if you start with a quilt, you really don't even need to line it or interface it. So you can make it affordable. All right. Now we have a, this cute little, oh, this cute little cropped number. Love this. 4 to 12 and 14 to 22. Loose fitting cropped double breasted jackets are fully lined. Have extended shoulders, shoulder pads, long two piece sleeves with working vent. View A has shaped front. View B has peak lapels. View A has shaped front. I guess that's what this means. And okay, well, A is a breeze and a half to sew. If you've never, ever, ever sewn a Vogue pattern before, this would be a great one to start with. I love that they paired it with the barrel pants. You can't really see the bottoms, but that's them. And no shirt. Right? I don't think these two things go together still, but I like the idea of no shirt and pairing it with jeans. Maybe not these jeans. Maybe not tweed and these jeans. I don't know, but maybe I'm talking myself into it. I don't know. It's just really cool either way. Then here's this one that's more traditional, you know, jacket with like the notch collar and stuff. But this is infinitely more difficult to sew than this one is. So start here. Yeah, I think they're cool. I think the pink one's like some kind of denim, maybe. Or maybe wool, maybe wool. Here's the back. I think that is so stinking cute. You could even make it out of like a really stable sweater knit. Oh, obviously they put it with her barrel pants and they the fabrics match. Dang, show us those pictures. I want to see the full length version of those pictures. This is cute though. This is real cute. What if you've got one of those cool chain things? I love the little chain thing. Okay. Brocade. Linen. Linen would be exceptional. Tweed. Wool suiting. 
also denim, corduroy, heck, velvet. I, I mean, really, truly any mid to heavyweight stable fabric, rock it out. Even those that knit fabric I was talking about. Make it kind of like a cardigan. Obviously a little less structured if it's knit, but more like a cardigan vibe. I don't know. That one's really fun. And very wearable. Like unique and different, but also very wearable. Which is some of the issues that I have with Vogue. It's like, am I really going to wear that? Okay, here's a trench coat size. 8 to 16, 18 to 26. Loose fitting line trench coats have collar, collar stand, epaulettes, two-piece raglan sleeves, storm flaps, welt pockets, self belt, belt loops, and back vent. View A has long panel designed to be draped over the shoulder. They are loving these little drapey shoulder moments. So that's this and comes down the back. Literally no point to it other than just like having a flowy moment behind you, like when it catches the wind. But yeah. Pretty traditional trench coat, raglan sleeves. You still have the gun flap is what I call it. It might have another name. I'm not sure. You've got the epaulets again, double breasted, welt pockets. Yeah. And these little belt things, belts for your wrists. I don't know. Um, I've made a trench coat before, similar-ish to this one. It didn't have this many details. This one also has the back flap, and as well as this thing. There's literally no point to this other than being, I have so much money that I can spend extra on this piece of fabric that does nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Again, with a really long vent, except this one's a coat, so that's okay. If you can see your skirt or whatever underneath it. Oh, they put her in gloves. Bless her heart in this summer we've had. Hopefully they took these pictures a long time ago. But yeah, just a really cool. If, you don't, if you've never made a trench coat, look into it. It was fun. It took me a long time. Um, many, many pieces. And just, you know, you really had to take your time with it. But I really enjoyed it. And I still have my trench coat to this day. Cotton blends, medium weight wools, water repellent fabrics. And then it's fully lined. And lots and lots and lots of interfacing as well. Then you have your buckles, your buttons, and more buttons. So they do get pricey, but again, they're worth it. I ended up doing piping in all of mine. So it kind of looks a little bit like um, Burberry, kind of. You can look back on my channel if you want to find it. I think if you just search trench coat, you'd be good. Okay, jacket and skirt. So this is their take on their little separate kind of like a suit it's you know what it looks a lot like the row do you know the brand the row mary kate ashley olsen's brand this is actually super chic and very high-end looking whether you believe it or not i guess it depends on which area of the world you live in but if you live in a place like new york city and you walked out the street in this you'd be turning heads all day long all day long 8 to 16 18 to 26 um, and I don't even think you're wearing this to the office, if I'm correct. Like, this is just like you're, like you'd go to Target in this. <laughs> Line jacket, semi-fronted, semi-fitted in front with caped back. See that detail here? Extended shoulder, shoulder pads, top stitching, notch collar, two-piece sleeves, working vent, double-breasted front, welt pockets with flaps, unlined, semi-fitted, tapered skirts. So the jacket is lined, skirt is unlined, sits on natural waist, has invisible, sorry, has center front and center back slits. To center front and, oh, there are front and back. Huh. I don't know. That's just like two little flaps on each side of you. That's interesting. Um, two inch stitched hems, mitered corners, waist darts, invisible back zipper. Yeah, long, oversized, but also still has some, like, structure and fit to it. That's what makes this so cool. Yeah, for sure. It's giving designer. It's giving high-end. This, very difficult to execute. I get that probably, especially on their time crunch, but maybe an iron would have helped. 
I think it's so cool. I don't live a lifestyle where this would be conducive, but if I did, this is, this is exactly the kind of stuff I would wear. I love this kind of stuff. Basics with a twist. That's me. But this is like basics with a twist in a girl that's way too, living way too cool of a life for me. Like we're not living the same life. Um, fabrics are crepe, flannel, linen blends, medium weight wools, and twill, plus your lining fabric for your jacket. And then you do need quite a bit of notions, but it would be worth it because this would retail easily in the thousands. So I hope people make that one. Okay. Scrolling down, we've got a caftan. Caftans are also having like a major moment. I'm teaching a caftan class, um, Fredericksburg, Nashville, for the original Quilt and Sewing Expo. You can look it up on sewingexpo.com, I think, for the dates and stuff if you want to make a caftan with me. But all the sizes in one, alphanumeric sizing, loose fitting caftans have tapered sleeves, so bat wing, um, stitched hems, bias neck facings view a has front ties and front slit neck opening view b has deep v neckline front okay and ties at the waist of the matching belt pulled through bound buttonhole openings in front and back so like a very well made caftan um but at the end of the day it's still just a caftan so this one i'm assuming yeah is just like straight and then it comes out like this but then some of this is still stitched. Can we see it here? No, not really. Let's see the line drawing. Oh, you still can't really even see it there. I might be wrong. It might just be a come straight up in a column and then come out for your bat wing and that's it. Calf, the term caftan is very loosely defined. Um, there's a million ways to make them. We will not be making one like this in <laughs> in my class. Um, it's your more traditional type of caftan that we make in class. Um, okay, somehow I got just far away from everything on that one. Hold on. Okay, let's look at the rest of the pictures. The, this idea is cool, but you're right. If you she's right, if you raise your hand. You know, if you raise your arm, it gets a little like you're pulling on things. That might be a little bit awkward. But man, I bet it's comfy. It also looks really oversized. I would be hardcore inspecting um, the pattern for finished garment measurements. They're only giving us the lower edge. But I'm sure, I mean, judging from this, you could size down easily two, maybe three, if you wanted something a little bit more fitted. That shouldn't be a problem. So Charmeuse, Crepe de Chine, Rayon Chalet, and Silk Jersey. Obviously Silk Jersey and not just regular Jersey. <laughs> um, but no notions. Like it's a really, I mean, you spend a lot on fabric, right? The fabrics are, there's a lot of them. But you can find stuff like that on clearance at different places. These are not, you know, very specialized. Well, except for the silk jersey. But you can find Rayon Chalet just about anywhere. And you can also make it shorter. It doesn't have to be full length. It can be, like, midi. That would still be fun. So. Caftans are cool. All right. Vogue. Vintage Vogue. This is going to be incredible. Sizing. 8 to 16, 18 to 26, 1954 evening dress and stole or a wedding dress. All around gathered skirt in two lengths. Uh, joins the bare top bodice, meaning strapless, at waistline. Separate under bodice has collarless round neckline. And cap sleeves. So, hmm, I'm not seeing an, uh, an under bodice anywhere. I'm confused already. Stole included. Oh gosh. I was doing so good on interpreting. Oh wait, that's this. Okay, options. You can put this little like top underneath or you can wear it bare. Those are your choices. But of course, if you're a demure bride, you would never show that much skin on your wedding day. 
All right, let's look at this. So, yes, strapless dress, super cute, amazing. Then this little thing underneath it, if you want some more modesty. This is your stole, which is really just a giant rectangle. And then this is the longer length version, shorter length version. Yeah. Okay, bodice, skirt A and B, scalloped edge lace, embroidered edging, under bodice and skirt band, stole, oh my gosh, organdy and netting. Oh no, they didn't put the actual fabrics on here. There's supposed to be a whole list of fabrics in this little area. <gasps> I hope they didn't print it like that. Oh no. There's no way that this is a lace see-through. Is the whole dress freaking see-through? Girly, is that your skin under there? No, it's got to be lined or something, right? Bodice and skirt A, separate under bodice and skirt band. Underskirt and lining for bodice. Underskirt and lining... I am so confused. So feel free to chime in in the comments, but I am completely like lost. I don't know what fabric is what. If this is this scallop edge lace embroidered edging, if that's the fabric, then is the dress see-through and then you have to wear this? That girl was not wearing it. The red dress was not wearing it. So I don't know if she's necky under there or what, but I'm lost. So <laughs> moving on, hopefully we can end on a better note here. This is a Mrs. Slack suit and skirt, AKA pantsuit. Vintage Vogue 1959 one piece. So it's a jumpsuit or a skirt or, or a dress. <laughs> slacks in two lengths join the fitted bodice at waistline zipper front closing below the notch collar below elbow length sleeves may be rolled back for cuffs and sleeveless and or sleeveless all around gathered skirt it's two lengths is the skirt over the slacks yes it is oh my god it's <laughs> so cute is two lengths separates at front oh my gosh look you have your little slack suit and then you throw on the skirt over top Talk about, what's it called when you, day to night? Talk about day to night. Like, hello, I am just like a busy working housewife. And then remove my skirt. Shabam, I'm ready to hit the town. Wow. I love an outfit change. But look, it's kind of like a boiler suit. It's really cute. Look at the little shorts one. Um, corduroy. Ooh, that's a choice. Cotton, satin, cotton twill, denim. I don't even know if I've seen cotton satin before, but cotton twill, denim, lightweight wools. That's also a choice. Linen, pique, shantong, Syrah, twill, velveteen, wool jersey. Yeah, I'm thinking more like chambray, but twill would work. I guess denim's in there. PK would be nice. And then interface with lawn or muslin. So fun. So cute. What a cute choice. Okay. So that's the end because the other two were like kids patterns and we don't do we don't do the children around here. Plus like a Vogue kids pattern. Are you kidding me? Like couture for kids. I don't know if I can ship that, but that's Vogue fall. What do we think? There are some standouts for me for sure. Um, whether or not they're going to end up in my stash TBD, but I'm definitely eyeing up this one maybe for Charlotte Frocktails. Maybe if I buy a new pattern, that's what I want to use, or that is one I would use. Um, what else? The pants. Yeah. The pants could definitely make their way. And maybe, maybe, maybe this one. I could see myself finding something cool and funky to make with that. Oh, and the jacket. I almost forgot about the jacket. 
And then if I were another life in another life, I would for sure get this one. So I think there's some good options in here. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. That's going to do it for me today, though. And I will see you all very soon. Bye.